If you own a car, you are legally required to buy insurance. When you mess up, cause a crash, hurt or even kill someone while driving a car, insurance will cover costs. Even if car had wrong tires, you were using your phone without hands-free setup or even were drunk. Yes, you still might go to jail if you mess up too much and mess up your and someone else's life. Don't drink and drive, you fool. We talk mandatory insurance only. Voluntary one will not pay if you broke any law. But insurance will cover the needs of your victim. And it makes sense. You drive a vehicle that can kill dozens of people only with the sheer kinetic energy while traveling 30 miles per hour, 50 kilometers per hour, to cover basic needs of people you hurt while driving a car. Poland where I live, does not have too much luck when it comes to a geopolitical situation. We have borders with Russia, Belarus and Ukraine. And if you slept for the last three years, there is an active war going on in Ukraine. Russia invaded in early 2022 and for the last three and a half years, Ukraine is bravely defending against this aggression. And if you missed that part as well, Drones and FPV drones are heavily used by both sides of the conflict. And when I say heavily, I mean it. Ukrainian Ministry of Defense stated that it will manufacture between 2.5 and, and 5 million drones in 2025. Let that sink in. 2.5 million. And maybe twice as much. And if you add this to a fact that Russia probably built similar number, one thing is sure. Drones, including kamikaze FPV drones, are the thing that will totally matter when Russia invades Poland. Bear in mind, I say when, not if. If so, it is in Polish army best interest to have as many soldiers and civilians trained for drone combat. Like in the beginning of the 20th century, smart states were promoting target shooting for the youth. In 21st century, smart states should be promoting FPV skills. Just in case, you know, it's cheaper to allow pilots teach themselves than to teach them everything ASAP and under enemy fire. So, what does Polish government does Instead, if you fly any RC model above 250 grams, you need to have an operator's insurance. By the way, in local legislation, operator and pilot are two separate things, and I have no idea what's the difference. And it makes total sense to have this kind of insurance. If something goes wrong, you will crash and, let's say, break a window, hit someone, etc. Shit! happens. Insurance is there to help both sides. And it's not even that expensive. Recreational use variant is somewhere around 150, 170. Commercial usage is of course more expensive. So where is the problem you might ask? The problem is like always in the details. If you compare this insurance to car insurance, you might realize something is off. Car insurance is two to three times more expensive. However, max insurance value for a car is 20 times bigger. Yet, you pay twice as much. Car insurance will pay out even if you are drunk. Don't drink and drive or else. Of course, Flying while drunk is not the point. Drone insurance will not pay out if anything was not 100% to the letter of the law. Spotter was looking somewhere else while you crashed? Well, no insurance. You took off without checking? No insurance. You crashed one meter too far from yourself? 
You guessed it, no insurance. But if you flew without insurance, $1,000 fine for you. Thank you very much. That is, of course, only another nail in the coffin of the FPV hobby. As a result, many pilots are just not interested in flying. Also because of those absurd regulations and general attitude of states towards FPV drones. Why bother? have some fun and increase country defense potential when everything around you is designed to make you not to want to fly at all. Yeah, don't forget to watch this video next. This was the FEV University. I'm Paweł Spychalski and thank you very much for watching. I would say happy flying, but I'm not sure it's appropriate anymore. This insurance thing really doesn't make that much sense if you think about it. I should get a drink.